today at the 11th Annual uh, Canadian Science Policy Conference and pleased to have some time to speak with Warren Maybe, uh, the Associate Dean and Director of the School of Policy Studies at Queen's University. Welcome, Warren. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So you're a moderator at the panel titled Artificial Intelligence and Natural Resource Management. Right. That panel's happening later today, but if you were to think of what the main takeaway message you'd like there to be from that panel, what do you think that would be? That's a good question. So uh, artificial intelligence is one of these areas that uh, is changing daily, you know, and, and the, what we're capable of doing and what that technology can bring to different sectors, to different industries, to jobs, uh, our understanding is, is growing, you know, day by day. Uh, so one of the things that I want to walk away with is just a better understanding of where we are. <clears throat> you know, I work in, in the area of natural resources and energy. Um, I've been involved in the area for decades now, uh, and I think artificial intelligence has the potential to change it more than anything that's come before. Okay. You know, more than mechanization, uh, more than the introduction of computers, uh, because we deal with very complex systems, and, and artificial intelligence is going to give us a brand new vision uh, of how to best manage those resources. So, as it's becoming the Associate Dean um, and Director of the School of Policy Studies at Queen's, yep. I wonder how your vision and perspective of policy studies at universities has evolved. Where do you see us going in the coming, in the coming years to really educate um, policy students to right. be ready to take on the challenges of the 21st century? So, <clears throat> it's a really good question, and, and I think about it every day. Um, I think that you know, policy is something that undercuts everything that we do. And I see it more and more as integral, not just to its own little subdiscipline or discipline, uh, but to all disciplines. You know, I think that uh, all researchers, all students should be cognizant of policy and the policy implications, <clears throat> the lessons uh, for government you know, out of the things that we're doing, the things we're researching. Um, I'd like to see really more integration with the kind of basic programs right across the university. Okay. Uh, so more integration into medicine, more integration into engineering, uh, more integration into education. Uh, because too often policy studies, I think, has sat outside of that and kind of looked at it, examined it, talked about it. Uh, but what we really need are not just the practitioners, but the students and, and you know, the thinkers uh, that are moving those sectors forward. Okay. So do you think that would help ultimately when it comes to making policy um, that the folks that are out there that are scientists understand the process better and the policy specialists yeah. understand the science better? Is that sort of what you're suggesting? Yeah, I think that <clears throat> policy's gotten very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as an example, think about uh, carbon taxes or think about uh, the upcoming clean fuels standard that the government of Canada is rolling out. Um, these sound like pretty simple policies on the surface. You know, you apply a tax to the amount of carbon that you emit, or you uh, tell people that they must reduce the greenhouse gas intensity of their fuel. But when you dive into it, you realize that, whoa, this is really complex. Even measuring it is difficult and debatable, and, and knowing what the real footprint is, knowing what the overall impacts are, uh, is a real challenge. And so I think it's incumbent on us to be connecting the scientists who understand how to measure it and understand how it's evolving over time, uh, to connect the practitioners, to connect those uh, that need to be involved in the discussion going forward. Great. And I want to ask a question more directly related to your expertise, which sure. I understand is in renewable energy. So in the past, we know that introduction of renewable policies has created some interesting perturbations in the market. Yeah. And what is there that, how do, how do we, how can we as policymakers, or policymakers generally, um, limit the negative effects of these kinds of, of um, initiatives? So uh, it's a real challenge uh, with some of these new technologies um, to get the policy right. And with renewable energy, uh, we've really seen a whole suite of policies introduced and tested and then kind of dismissed because of those negative 
perturbations. You know, the, the impact of, of rolling some of these policies out has just been too great. Uh, a great example is the Green Energy Act in Ontario. So uh, a terrific policy, terrific goals. Uh, you know, I love the idea of increasing the amount of renewable energy in the province. Um, but some of the tools inside that policy were very uh, blunt. They were blunt instruments. So the feed-in tariff uh, and the way that it was rolled out, uh, the amount of money that was invested, it was probably disproportionate to what we actually got back. And so one way to get around it um, is to write policy that's a little bit more goal-oriented rather than technology-oriented. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that shift. You know, So instead of saying we want so many liters of renewable fuel or so many uh, gigawatts of solar energy, uh, we just say that we want cleaner energy, you know, and that the mix needs to get cleaner and we'd like you to get there, but we're not going to tell you exactly how. And I think that industry is very good at mitigating those negative impacts because, of course, it affects their bottom line. Right. So that's what they think about first. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So finally, the CSPC is thrilled to have you here and be part of the conference. Yeah. And in your opinion, I'd like to know what you think the biggest value is and what you enjoy most about coming to CSPC. So what I find <clears throat> to be of the greatest value here is uh, the ability to see talks covering all the different areas, all the different uh, policy uh, kind of focuses, foci, foci um, that are out there in one big meeting. You know, I can go out and see what the latest developments are around health, and I can go out and see what the latest uh, developments are around artificial intelligence. Uh, and I can take all of that back to my teaching and to my research. Um, I can make contacts with people that I otherwise wouldn't be running into. I would, uh, it'd be hard to, you know, build up that list of connections and to inform myself as much as I can at a meeting like this. So I enjoy coming every year. Fantastic. Thanks for your time today, Warren. Thank you for having me.